Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. We're back with another example of how to find zeros for a function using our calculator. And in this example, I have a much more difficult polynomial that I want to start finding its zeros. So here I have a fifth degree function and I'm really curious about what those zeros are. Now, we're going to use our calculator to help us out, but as you'll see that our calculator sometimes has a little bit of trouble actually displaying those zeros. All right, so let's go ahead and grab our calculators and just get this function entered in. There we go. So to enter in any of these functions, you want to go to your y equals screen. So that's this button right here. And let's just type it in. So x to the fifth plus 12 x to the fourth minus 83 x to the third minus 200 x squared plus 95 x plus 205. There we go. So this is a pretty long polynomial. You can see that my screen, it's kind of wrapped itself around so I could actually display all of it. Now let's go ahead and take a peek at this graph. All right. So as you can see that we have some very interesting features from this polynomial you can't really see any of the twists and turns. All I get are these look like vertical lines. Well, what's happening here is that the curves of the uh, polynomial go up so high and down so low that they're actually off the screen. So somewhere here it probably turns, or maybe it turns down here. Well, not to worry, the calculator can still find the zeros, we just have to be a little bit more careful on how we do it. Now, another thing you might notice is that I have a fifth degree polynomial, and it looks like I only have one, two, three, four of these vertical lines. It means that it might actually have another zero somewhere. If this happens to you, you might want to go into your window and readjust it so that it's a little bit larger. So mine's set from negative 10 to 10. I'm, I'm going to adjust it from negative 20 to 20 just to see if I can see any more zeros. Well, you know, it looks like another one is showing up right over there. All right, well, unfortunately, by opening up my window, now it, it's getting kind of jumbled up what's happening in the middle. So here's going to be my approach for helping the calculator find these zeros. I'm first going to try and find these zeros uh, kind of away from the origin. And then as I find the outside ones, I'm going to adjust my window so I can see the ones a little bit closer to the origin. Okay, so let's give this a try. The first zero that I want to find is actually way out here. Now remember that I set my window between negative 20 and 20. So this guy, it looks like it's somewhere around negative 16 or negative 15. So let's go into our zeros function to see if we can have it find that zero. Go to second calc, select your second option, and that's the zero. Now usually a little blinking cursor shows up on the screen, but unfortunately since my you know twists and turns are mostly off the screen, I usually can't see my little blinking cursor. That's okay, it's still on there and it's still being kept track of by the calculator. Right now it says it's located at a negative 8.9. And as I move my left and right arrow buttons, it'll continue to move that uh, little blinking cursor. Now, if I want to find this zero, and I think it's somewhere around negative 15, I want to keep moving this until it is somewhere to the left of negative 15. So I've actually moved it all the way over to negative 17. And even though I can't see it, that's where it is. So press Enter. Now it wants to know the right bound. I'm going to move it to somewhere on the right side of negative 15. So I've placed it at negative 13. Press enter one more time and it says make a guess. Let's go ahead and put it somewhere around negative 15. Good. And press enter one more time. So it says that that zero is actually located at looks like a negative 16.31 Let's go ahead and round that and say 317. All right. So that's that zero. Let's go ahead and try and find this other one that looks like we can kind of see as well. And let's see. It looks like that one's probably located at maybe, maybe negative 8 or negative 9. So let's go through these options again. So second, calc, 
we'll have it find the zero, press enter, and then we want to choose some place on the left side of, say, eight. I really have to move this one over, let's see. Uh, let's just be on the safe side, let's put it at five, because five would be somewhere on the left side of eight. Okay, press enter, pick a right bound, I'm going to put the right bound at 10, press enter, and uh, let's make a guess, say around 8.5, that sounds good, enter. Alright, so actually it looks like I was a little bit off, because the calculator found it at 6.168, and I've rounded that one as well. All right. So now that we've found these two zeros that are kind of far away from the origin, I'm really getting curious about which ones are a little bit closer to that origin. So I'm going to adjust my window, now that i found these two, uh, to just take a peek at what's going on in there. So rather than going from negative 20 to 20, I'm going to readjust this from negative 5 to 5. All right, so my graph is still going pretty uh, far off the screen that these look pretty much like vertical lines, but at least I can see that I have one, two, three of them, and that'll help me uh, start to hunt them down. In fact, this one looks like it's located at a negative two, this one's somewhere around a negative one, and this one looks like it's almost a positive one. So let's find each of these one at a time. So second, calc, go down to your zero option. Now we want to choose some place on the left side of negative two, so we use our arrow buttons until we get some number on the left side of negative two. So I'm going to set this at negative two and a half. Enter. Uh, choose some place on the right. Okay, I'm going to set this at negative one and a half because I don't want to go too far past this other one. Press enter. And I'll make a guess that this is somewhere around negative two. Enter. All right, it says that that one is located at a negative 1.889. All right, two more to go. Second calc, find a zero, enter. We'll choose some place on the left side of this one, so I'm going to choose negative one and a half, enter. Choose a point on the right side. So I'll choose negative uh, 0.5, enter, and make a guess as to where it is. I think it's somewhere around negative 1, so I'm going to put it kind of close to there. Press enter, and let's see where this one is actually located. Uh, looks like we're not too far off, a negative 1.020, uh, that's what that would round to. Cool, okay, just one more to go. Let's find this other one that looks like it's around 1 by going second calc, select our zero option. And picking some place on the left side of one, so about a half. Then we'll move it to somewhere on the right side of one, so 1.7 sounds okay. And make a guess somewhere around one, enter one last time. And this last zero looks like it's located at 1.057. All right, so I have a fifth degree polynomial and I found one, two, three, four, five zeros. So I actually know I'm done. All right, so you can see that some of these graphs can get kind of large and they might go off the screen, but this is one technique that you could use to actually start hunting them down, even if you can't see all of the graph. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.